I played a lot of games over the course of last year, new games, games that I've played many times before in the past, and just games that were new to me in general. But out of all of them, this one quickly became a favorite. Does that spell the reveal? Uh, who cares? Let's just talk about Time Spinner. Time Spinner is a Metroidvania type game, so you can already see the attraction there for me. But unlike a lot of indie games which have come out as of late, which either go for a modern hand-drawn style like SteamWorld Dig 2, or a bit more 8-bit inspired look, like the Messenger. This one goes for a more clearly 16 to 32 bit look, which I find really appealing. And I find that rather fitting since that's the era which brought us the genre. Anyway, in this game you play as Linnaeus, the latest in a long line of time messengers selected to go back in time by the way of the titular Time Spinner and warn their people of impending doom, which just happens to appear the night of her birthday. Linnaeus and her mother attempt to escape via the Time Spinner, but her mother is caught and killed by the hands of the evil Lachium leader, Emperor Anubius. Lunaeus manages to escape, the Time Spinner is damaged in the attack, and that throws her off course. And that's where the adventure begins, with her lost and fueled by revenge, and driven to find her way to put an end to Emperor Novius. Just because she's lost at the start of the game doesn't make Linnaeus powerless. She has this limited telekinetic ability referred to as aura control in the game. This enables her to attack with a pair of floating orbs tuned to her ability. You can find different orbs with different effects as you make your way through the game. You can also find adornments which will give your orbs other abilities. One ability will be passive and the other is a charge ability which will cost you some aura energy to use. As the game progresses, you will also gain the ability to freeze time for short periods, which, as you can imagine, this can be very useful. You can be making platforms out of airborne enemies or giving yourself a leg up against bosses, especially since you don't take any damage while time is frozen. And that's not the only form of time manipulation that you get to do, as you will discover an ability which will let you transport between a fixed point in the past and the present day. This kind of reminds me of time travel in Sonic CD or the dual instances of Dracula's Castle in Harmony of Dissonance. Remember, things that happen in the past will sometimes have an effect on the present. If you haven't already guessed, I am doing as much as I can to explain elements of the game without spoiling any major plot points. Let's just say there's quite a bit to the story of the game and it's quite compelling. You can gather a lot of it through character interaction, but there's also a good-sized chunk that is revealed to you in the form of lost memories scattered throughout time and in the library computers. Reading these, of course, is a totally optional endeavor, but I do recommend it as it really adds to the story and the experience. Even before the story, what I think is really going to draw people in has got to be the presentation. As I mentioned before, the visual style is intentionally a retro-inspired. This game was released on 1997 hardware. It would probably look exactly the same as it does here. The visuals aren't the only thing that draws inspiration from the 32-bit era, as the music sounds like it might have been outtakes from Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Jeff Ball, this game's composer, paid homage to Mishiro Yamane's work in nearly every single track of this game. He even went as far as tracking down some of the same models of synthesizers in order to help capture the sound. While the music selections do sound like they may have been lifted from the originator of the Metroidvania genre, they do not sound the least bit out of place here in this game. Experienced players of this kind of game will know exactly what to expect with the gameplay. Relic system, familiars, explorations, huge enemies, it's all there. There are a couple times where they do tweak the Metroidvania style. There's a ledge grab which is a little bit more Metroid and it's a welcome touch. There's also a mild crafting element. This could be considered a bit more towards the visual presentation or the story, but the inclusion of sci-fi elements as a whole could even be thought of as Metroid influence. Freezing time and using enemies as platforms to get into otherwise out of reach areas is sort of similar to the way Samus uses her freeze ray in the 2D Metroid games. You even get a freeze orb later in the game, but I never bothered using it as I preferred the iron orbs over all the other types. Similarly, I mainly use matching sets of charms and orbs with exception of some of the passive effects, some of which may reduce damage taken or heal, but I kept with the blade ring which spread blades from the orbs, making it so you do damage even when not attacking. More than anything else, this game is an exceptionally well-polished, retro-inspired game with an amazing soundtrack and a really well-thought-out storyline. As I said right in the beginning of this video, the game quickly became one of my favorites that I played all of last year. I bought it on a whim and spent that whole weekend playing through it. I just really didn't want to 
stop. It's not a super long game. You can probably play through it from beginning to end in about seven to eight hours total, as long as you're not obsessing about finding every little thing. So needless to say, this game does get a recommendation from me. It is a lot of fun. It has some depth to it, and it's pretty enjoyable all the way through. I didn't find anything to majorly fault about it, and if you want to check it out for yourself, it's not hard to do. It's available on Steam for PC, Mac, and Linux. I will say one little note. I've played it on both... Uh, my gaming laptop is uh, Intel with an NVIDIA graphics card. My uh, desktop here is uh, AMD Ryzen and uh, Radeon graphics card. And I get a little screen tearing when I play it on this machine. Your mileage may vary there. Anyway, this is also available on the PS4 to download and the PS Vita, but I have not heard good things about the Vita version. Further issues with slowdown and frame rate issues. For all I know, some of that may have been fixed by now. Um, there's talks of them trying to bring it out in other sources, but for right now, where it is, not hard to find. Do check it out if you so desire. I recommend it. And with that, I will leave you there. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you've seen, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring the bell for updates. All that jazz. Want to get in touch? Leave a comment down below. I'll see you next time. Take care.